Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques, and everything about Excel. All right, uh, before we begin, I wanted to say a big thank you to all of our new subscribers. Welcome. Uh, if you haven't clicked on it already, make sure you click on the bell icon uh, with your subscription so that you get notifications next. Uh, video that you'll get delivered directly to your inbox. If you're not a subscriber, please click on that subscribe button and then click on that bell icon so you get notified. Also, everybody for the likes, the thumb ups, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's really helping my channel. Uh, I've seen a great number of uh, new likes for each one of my videos um, as opposed to the past. And uh, so thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add resource names to a Gantt chart. Uh, actually, this could be any type of task in information. Uh, the use case was from a user who sent me a question saying, how can I get uh, the who's responsible for each one of the tasks uh, on my Gantt chart? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, this is for Excel 2007, 2010. There's a much easier way to do this in Excel 2013 and Excel 2016. But uh, you could also do the same technique in those as well, because uh, you never know a use case where you'll have to do something very similar to how I'm going to show you that we're going to do it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the data. Uh, first, we want to set up our data, as you see here. Uh, so I've got um, some tiering going on, some multi-category uh, access labels. So we've got plan and plan. There's two parts, requirements and design. Now, since the uh, requirements and design are underneath this with blanks below um, the phases, uh, it will sh group those um, so that you can see each phase separately. Uh, now, you'll notice that I have phase and task, my uh, header values up one column or up one row. Now, it's because if you put them here, Excel will have a tough time when you go to create your chart trying to understand uh, where does your where do your multi-level categories end and where does your data begin um, because of these date values. So it just causes problems. So in this case, it's just easier to move the headers up one row. And uh, so just be aware that they are blanks up above. Uh, and if you're ever having that kind of problem, always start there first if it's not grouping your data the way that you think it should be. So why don't we go ahead and start now. You see we've got the phase and task. We've got start dates. Now these are just uh, numbers. So if I go change the number format to like a comma, you'll notice that um, March, I'm sorry, February 5th, 2018 is the same value of 43,136. Reason being is there's 43,136 days since January 1st, 1900. It's different if you're on a Mac, I've got a whole post about it. So we want to remember that number, 43,136. Uh, it's the minimum value of our entire Gantt chart that we're gonna make, 43,136, because we're gonna need to modify uh, our uh, minimum access value uh, to make sure it takes that into account. Otherwise, we'll start as a date of 1900 and it's just that these uh, tasks won't show up on the chart very well. They'll be very, very tiny. Next, we have how long is each one of the tasks going to take? There's a duration of seven days, 14 days, um, and that's all fine and dandy. I can make a Gantt chart out of this right now, um, but I'm going to add another data series called Resource Filler. Now, this is going to be a clustered bar chart, whereas the Gantt chart we're making is going to be a cluster, I'm sorry, stacked bar chart. Uh, so we're going to create this Resource Filler, and we want it to be equal to the start date plus the duration in days. I'm just gonna hit enter on that and then I'm gonna copy that all the way down. Now, what that is going to do is that is gonna create a new series with the exact same length as our uh, the ending point of our Gantt chart on each one of those tasks so that then I can apply my labels um, for resource names to that very end point. Uh, now we're ready to create our chart. We are not gonna chart in the resource name. We are just gonna chart from A2 all the way down to E11. Gonna go up to my insert ribbon going to go to the bar chart and I'm going to choose a stacked bar chart. Now you can now see, um, let me uh, make this a little bigger so that it, uh, uh, you can see a lot more of it. Um, so our uh, bar chart now looks like this. So it has the start date, which uh, is a really large number, 43,000, right? Um, duration is, you can't see it. It's very small. It's like seven days to 60 days. It's just it's in between here. It's just so small. There's one you can see down here, this little red line. Um, and then resource filler is being stacked on top of that, and that's 43,000. It's really large. 
yet again. Uh, but let's get our chart ready and we'll deal with those uh, start dates and duration here in a second. First off, the plan is on the bottom. I want it on the top. I'm gonna double click on my primary vertical axis and I'm gonna choose categories in reverse order as an option on my access options. You can now see plan is on the top, test and deployer on the bottom. Now my dates up above are um, really not what I wanna see. They're all jumbled together. I wanna make this just month and day. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm going to change um, the number to be a date and I'm gonna just choose month and day as my type and click on OK. Now you can see that it's looking a lot better. Um, however, I don't want this starting at 1900. I want this starting at that number that we had before of February 5th, 2018. So if I double click on that primary horizontal axis and I change my minimum axis to 43,136, and click on close. You can see um, that uh, the start date is, uh, um, it's there. Let me hit delete on this so you can kind of see what our Gantt chart is gonna look like underneath, right? Each one of those start dates are coming out from 1900 all the way to uh, 2018. Um, right now I just have this resource filler on top of it. So we'll be hiding that here by making it a no fill uh, as our color so it becomes transparent, but we'll do that in a future step. So let's talk more about this resource filler uh, series. What I wanna do is I wanna move this resource filler series, the green one, uh, to my secondary access by double clicking on the series, make sure it says format data series, and move it to the secondary axis and click on close. So you can now see it is out there on the secondary axis. Um, down below it's also added my secondary horizontal axis. But the problem is um, here is it does not show you your vertical axis. So we wanna do a few things. One, um, I'm gonna uh, fix this uh, primary hor uh, sec or secondary horizontal axis by double clicking on it. I'm gonna make sure it's fixed at 43,136 and I'm gonna click on uh, the number value, and I'm gonna leave the date a little larger. I'm gonna make sure that year is showing up in there as well, or let's even just do uh, with the, the March. So uh, March is there instead of 03. I wanna make sure I can see it because I am gonna get rid of it here in a little while. Now, once again, I said it does not show you your secondary vertical axis. Uh, so we need to click anywhere in our chart, go up to your layout ribbon, go to axes, and then go down to secondary vertical axis and do show default axis. So you can see there it is, and uh, this explains a little bit about what's going on with our uh, Gantt chart lines, why they look a little off. Plan is on the bottom, deploy is on the top. So we wanna do the same thing that we did to our primary vertical axis by double clicking on it and then choosing categories in reverse order. Now you can see my um, secondary horizontal axis is now up on the top, but I do have the correct categories matching up um, underneath my, um, uh, on the secondary axis. So we're getting pretty close here. Uh, now that we've got that all set up, what I wanna do is I wanna change this chart type from the resource filler by clicking on it once, then going up to my design ribbon, going over to change chart type, and then I'm gonna change this to a bar chart instead of a stacked bar chart. Now, the reason I am doing that is you just are limited to your label options in a stacked bar chart versus a clustered bar chart. Um, so uh, we can go to the outside end of the clustered uh, bar chart as opposed to being limited to the internal parts of a stacked call, uh, bar chart. So I'm gonna click on OK. Now, it might look a little strange. You can see what's happening is our data, um, since we're showing our vertical uh, secondary axis, it's starting at 1900 way over on the right and it's moving the bars way out here as you can see it. Um, so it's uh, not looking exactly like I'd like, but that's okay. When I delete these um, vertical and horizontal secondary axis, it'll all fix itself and we'll have no problem. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's, we left the uh, like August and March, you can see that that is our secondary horizontal axis. I'm gonna click on it and hit my delete key and you can see that they're now flipped back over to matching over on the left-hand side. And um, here is the trick that we're gonna do um, in order to show our uh, secondary access um, labels as being the resources. So I've selected my chart. I'm gonna go up to my design ribbon, and then in my data group, I have a select data button. 
Now you can see it's got start date, duration date. Um, those are using the horizontal category access and it says horizontal, but I guess technically it's vertical, right? In our case, since we are using a bar chart, this should just say category access labels. Um, and so it's got plan requirements, pl design, development, all of those sorts of things. Um, and then you click on resource filler, it is on the secondary access, but they look the same. Um, that's because it is going to use the same categories unless we tell it to use different ones. Um, so you've got two choices. Anytime there is a uh, primary access, it's going to have a set of horizontal access labels. And then all of your ones on the secondary axis are gonna use their own. In this case, they happen to have the exact same range, but I can edit that. And then so you can see it's choosing A3 through A, B11, but I'm gonna change it to this resource range over here on F3 through F11. And I'm gonna click on OK, click on OK again. You can see now, actually, if I click on this, uh, start and duration are both the original categories. Um, and now I have a different level of, cat different categories for my resource filler on the secondary axis. Gonna click on OK, and then um, what we wanna do now is, uh, you can see that they're all there and um, being used correctly. I can go ahead and delete my secondary vertical axis then I'm gonna choose the resource filler data series in green. I'm gonna to go to my layout ribbon, I'm gonna to go to data labels, and I'm gonna do outside end. And you, we now have data labels, but it's choosing value as the default option. If I double click on any one of those um, data labels to bring up my format data labels dialog box, I'm gonna change categories. I'm gonna choose categories and uncheck value click on close, and now you can see those categories we just added. Uh, Luis and Miguel are doing the design, Luis is deploying um, each time to the, the QA environment, to the production environment, I'm doing the training. All of our labels are now out there and working correctly. They're on the very end of this green clustered bar chart. Now we don't wanna show the green clustered bar chart, so double click on it. And when your dialog box comes up, oops, I went to data point, double click, and double click anywhere uh, in the chart and then double click on the series uh, it's to make sure it says format data series and not format data point. Click on fill, no fill, close. And we're gonna do the same thing for the start date. Now, if you, you're having a hard time, you notice I, uh, since resource filler is on top of, and it's only ever gonna check that, I'm, I'm, every time I double click on it, it's just gonna continue to open that up as the series that I'm trying to adjust. And you can see in the background, that is what is being highlighted right now. Um, but what I wanna do is if I click anywhere in here, it's gonna click on resource filler. And if I use my up or down arrows, you can see that it is moving um, the series to start date, resource filler, duration and days. Once I have that as my choice, I can click on the format selection button. I can do control one to bring up the format data series dialog box. Number of different ways to make it no fill. Click on close. And now you have your Gantt chart. Uh, um, with uh, the specific data labels. Looks like I made a mistake here, right? I didn't actually copy the data labels right. Um, uh, so to fix that, I'm gonna click on my chart, go to my design ribbon, go to select data. I'm gonna go into this resource filler and look at my horizontal categories since it's on the secondary axis. And look at that, it's F5 to F13. It was supposed to be F3 to F11. Um, and click on OK, OK, and now we've got the appropriate people uh, listed as resources for each one of those Gantt chart tasks. Uh, the final thing that I need to do is probably just click on my legend and then hit the delete key and my chart is done. Once again, you can use this for any type of task information, not just uh, resource names, maybe percent complete, maybe resource names and percent complete. You know, there's lots of different things that you can do, uh, but this just shows you another way that you can get different labels if you don't have Excel uh, 2013 or 2016. That'll be the next video where I'll show you how to easily do that. I want to thank you again for watching. Thanks for all the likes. And if you haven't hit subscribe, make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the bell notification uh, so that you are going to get notifications delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.